Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through how to use Tableau shortcuts in Tableau desktop. This time I'm making the video for Windows users. If you haven't already checked it out and you're a Mac user, go and find my video for Mac shortcuts. I'm gonna put it in the description below and it's also popping up on screen right now. Right now I'm on the documentation, which actually goes through all the shortcuts I'm going to be talking about today. This is not anything original. I haven't you know, stumbled into any of these shortcuts on my own. Uh, in fact, when I first found the space and, and realized there were this many shortcuts, it was a really humbling moment for me because I, I thought I knew the product well and, and here I was learning hundreds of things that I, I didn't even know, know existed. But uh, this is a great page. I'm gonna put it in the description. Let's get stuck into these shortcuts. Uh, I'm gonna fire up Tableau and we'll get started with our first one. Okay, we're here in Tableau Desktop and the first shortcut I'd like to show you is the ability to open up a new workbook. That's Control N. So if you hit Control N, what that does is it opens up a new workbook. Now, you only need to have Tableau open for this to actually work and it will essentially open up a new workbook. Now, the use case here is if you're working on a workbook already, you're doing something com complicated, and you just wanna try something out with another data set, or you just wanna check something in another database. I often use Tableau to go and interrogate databases myself. So actually opening up a new workbook, connecting to the data, checking the thing you need to check, then if it actually works out into something you wanna use, you can import that back into the main workbook using something like a bookmark or exporting the sheet and then importing it again into uh, another workbook. So that's pretty much it. Control N opens up a new workbook. Okay, now we're in a workbook. I know there's nothing in here, but what I'd like to do is show you another one, which is the ability to create a new sheet. Typically, you might grab your mouse and go down here to hit the new sheet icon, or you might go up to the worksheet section and create a new worksheet. You can see right here that it actually says Control M is the worksheet uh, option. So let's go ahead, click the new worksheet there, but then let's hit Control M ourselves, and you'll see that it opens up a new worksheet. Now, this is really, really fast. You can just smash this as many times as you like. And so if you're in the real flow of analysis and you don't want to sort of uh, you know, reach for the mouse and do something, you can just hit Control M, try something new there, and then incorporate that into your dashboard. Now, this next one is, is really fascinating. I, I, I don't use this that often, but it's useful. It's just kind of a, a weird shortcut. So the reason you don't use it is because it actually goes ahead and describes what you're looking at in any given worksheet. So for this, I'm just gonna hop into one of the sample workbooks. I'm gonna go into this monthly sales segment chart here, and I'm just gonna open that sheet. Now, once in this sheet, I'm just gonna close Show Me here so you can see the sheet in its full view. If I go ahead and hit Control E, what this actually does is it opens up something called the sheet description. And this is basically Tableau's best attempt at describing what exactly is in this sheet. Now, there's quite a lot of information here. In fact, it's sometimes very, very useful. Let's say you're documenting something on a particular sheet, or you need some information to know how a calculation is done. Instead of looking at the marks, pane, filters, pane, and figuring out how everything works, you can just open this, and if you sort of assimilate text a lot better than you assimilate the interface of Tableau, then you've got everything in a really nice structured format here, including even the data source, the way calculations are done, and the specific format and data types for a particular field. Okay, this next one's really easy. What this will let you do is cycle through the different tabs very easily. So if you make sure you're inside of Tableau, sometimes if you click outside of Tableau and you try a shortcut, it won't work. You need to make sure you click inside of Tableau, then go ahead and try the shortcut. So this one's control shift tab, okay? So control shift tab will shift through the workbook. It's a really nice, simple shortcut. Now that one went backwards. If you just wanna go forward, you can just hit control tab and that will take you forward. So control tab takes you forward, control shift tab takes you backwards. Okay, for this next one, I'm gonna need you to really pay attention because this shortcut is a little bit subtle, but it really, really helps when you're in the flow of analysis. Okay, let's say that I'm over here in the uh, row shelf. So I'm gonna double click in the row shelf to open up an ad hoc calculation. An ad hoc calculation is essentially when you start just typing a calculation straight into the uh, rows shelf or the column shelf or pretty much any of the other shelves, you can just start typing um, formulas and it will start allowing you to type a calculation. Now, I haven't written this one properly, so let's go ahead and just type in S with the capital cells, hit enter, and that will auto complete. Now, the thing that this shortcut does is it changes the focus from this ad hoc view to the search pane on the left. And the search pane is over here. I've just got my mouse on it there. So just watch what happens. If I hit control F, it changes my focus to the search pane on the left. Then I can use some of the search operators to find 
a measure, let's say, called profit. Okay, and then I can then take the profit item there, drag it into my still open ad hoc calculation, and we're working. So this shortcut allows you to basically quickly switch the data search pane and do a little search, find the fill that you need, and then bring it in. In case you forget or you're not sure, you can do a little bit of contextual search uh, without taking your hands off the keyboard. So it's really, really, really powerful. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of hard to get your head around the first few times, but actually once you start using it in a calculation, you'll, you'll find that it's quite useful. The other thing to bear in mind though with this is that it doesn't work if your focus is on another modal window that's already been created. So in this particular case, if I put my cursor here and I just type cursor here, then I hit control F, you'll see it doesn't move. My cursor stays inside of the calculation window. And so this is really, really important. You have to make sure that your cursor is outside of the window because this is built as modal. Once your cursor comes out of here, when you hit Control F, it does start working and then you can start doing um, search parameters. And you can even just use your cursor to go up and down between these, hit Profit, Enter, and then you've basically got the field that you need. Okay, now I've broken this view a little bit, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and fix this before we move on to our next shortcut. Uh, let me just remove that. And uh, for this next one, this is a really simple one. You often do this in the browser. You hit Control R or Control F5 or F5 to refresh. In Tableau, you can pretty much do the same thing. Hit Control R and it basically just does a refresh of the data source. So if you're connected live to a database, this is kind of handy if you've got things that are changing quite frequently, or maybe you're looking at some cached data and you know it's cached because the queries have been running in the background. Hit Control R just to make sure there's a fresh pull of data and you're pretty much good to go. Now, another shortcut whilst we're on the topic of data, if you hit Control D, this allows you to open up the data pane and simply go to your data source and hit connect, whatever you might be connecting to, whether it's an actual database, access Excel, or any of the uh, very many uh, database sources that Tableau has available to you. Uh, just hit Control D wherever you are in a worksheet and that will open that up straight away. Now for this next one, we're going to switch over to a different sheet. In fact, we're going to build one. Let's go ahead and build a very simple view so we can see what's going on. I'm going to start by dragging cells onto rows, then bring in uh, something from the product hierarchy onto columns. Let's bring in category, okay? And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees just to make sure uh, that it works really well. I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to do that a little bit later on. Now, the key thing here is this shortcut actually allows you to move an item from the data pane here on the left, straight to the marks pane or the columns and rows or even filters and pages without using your mouse. Yes, you're probably saying, how is that even possible? Well, this is how it works. Simply select the field you'd like to move to one of these positions. So I'm gonna hit subcategory. And now you can see it's selected, it's highlighted in blue. And then all we need to do, let's say I wanna move this to the color shelf. All I need to do is hit Alt Shift. So Alt Shift and this time O, and it moves it onto the marks pane and puts it onto the color shelf. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do I know what these shortcuts are? Well, if you head over to the documentation that I've put in the description below, it actually has a range of these. So O will put it onto the color shelf, L will put it onto detail. So let's go ahead here and put product name onto detail, Alt Shift L, and you'll see that's added it to the detail and it's changed our, uh, our colors a lot more. Let's say I wanted to put segment onto the filter pane, it's Alt, Shift and of course F for filter and there we go. It actually asks me what, how would I like to filter this? I can hit consumer here because I've actually got an option here. This isn't as good. Um, I kind of wanted to put it there and just show me the filter. That would probably be a much nicer little uh, tweak for that feature. This is a nice way of adding fields onto the visualization without taking your uh, hands off the keyboard and moving them around. Once you get to know this, it also gets really quick. For example, if I want to add profit onto the columns, well, the columns is typically the Y axis. So if I hit Alt Shift Y, then it will add that onto the Y axis, which is of course columns. And of course, if you do, uh, let's say, let me take a segment, and we do Alt Shift X, the X axis, well, of course it puts segment onto the X axis. And because we've filtered it to consumer, we're only seeing the consumer ones. So 
This is not a great sort of showcase of, of visualization or anything like that, but just bear in mind, we've added pretty much all but two items onto this view without using a mouse. Uh, my mouse is still in the same place it is over here on the left-hand side where we started. So that's a really cool set of shortcuts. Check out all of them. There's about seven that you'll probably want to use uh, quite often. And actually just knowing they exist means you can add it into your workflow and make things a lot easier. Now I want to clean this view up and then I'm gonna show you a shortcut that will help you change and rotate what's on columns and rows very, very quickly. Uh, let me just clean this up. So I'll remove profit and remove segment, just make this a lot simpler. Remove product and just return it back to uh, one set of colors. What I'll also do is just increase the space here per category so that it's a little bit easy to see what's going on. Okay, so this is a great shortcut. What it does is it rotates the chart 90 degrees. It's essentially the same as hitting the shortcut up here, but you don't actually have to go and hit your cursor with the mouse. You don't actually have to use the mouse to find that and then click on it to get it to do what you want. The shortcut you're gonna want here is Control W. Okay, so this just switches this around. And here's the thing, watch how fast this is. I can go really, really fast. I can literally spam it and it works. I've got Control W all over my screen now. They're gonna slowly start to disappear, but you get the point. It's much, much faster than me finding the cursor and hitting this uh, and rotating it every single time. So if you're in the flow of analysis and your hands are in the keyboard, just hit Control W, that will rotate it for you. Now, whilst we're here, we might as well also see how to flip the orientation uh, of column labels at the bottom of the view. So, so column labels are these fields here at the bottom of the view. Sometimes you want them to be horizontal as they are now, and other times you want them to be vertical. So again, for this one, it's control L, and all that does is it rotates them. So again, it saves you having to switch those around yourself, and it makes it much, much easier to get that done very quickly. One thing to note though, if you change this to custom, rather than automatic, then it doesn't work. So if I hit Control L now, you'll see it's not working. Change this back to automatic, hit Control L, and it works. I actually think that's a bug. I think it should work regardless. You're basically just changing the orientation uh, 90 degrees, a bit like turning something on a, on a swivel. So um, that's pretty much the feature, but just be careful that if you've changed them manually, then this shortcut isn't going to work. Now, let's say I want to clear this worksheet really quickly. You just need to hit Alt, Shift, Backspace. So Alt, Shift, Backspace clears the sheet, nice and clean, ready to go for the next view. Now, the next one hurts me a lot. You know, I, I just don't understand people who float objects on their dashboard. It, it's like a crazy world. If you haven't already, check out my layout containers videos. If you watch that, you'll never ever float an object on the dashboard again. But if you do float objects in the dashboard, well, there's a little nice shortcut here that I'm gonna show you. So if you bring the object onto the view and then you just, you know, use your arrow keys to move it up and down one pixels. It's very, very subtle, but it's perfect. But here's the thing, why would you do this? Why would you punish yourself like this? This is crazy. Why would you punish yourself like this? I mean, moving things one pixel at a time is just crazy. Create layout containers, create structure, create organization, and things will naturally just fall into the right place. You'll even be able to you know, get away with five pixels here and there, and it'll still look great. But in case you forgot what this video is about, it's about shortcuts and the up, down, left, right arrows will help you nudge content on a floating dashboard. Now, if you want to resize a floating object, you just hit Alt and then you can do the same thing and it actually changes the size uh, again. Now it does it one pixel at a time. And again, this is specifically for people who are punishing themselves on floating dashboards. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's exactly the same as moving things a pixel around, but this time you just, you know, shifting the size um, one pixel at a time. It's just a really painful way to work. Okay, for this next one, we're on the what if forecast because we're going to be talking about tables. So this is a nice little shortcut. If you're in a table, hit control, then an arrow, and it basically changes the size of the individual cells. So I'm holding control right to make the columns wider, control left to make the columns narrower, control up to make the rows taller, control down to make the rows shorter. And there you go, that's pretty much a really nice sort of set of shortcuts for your tables, just to give, give your tables that sort of little bit of extra spacing. It doesn't work so well here because this is a very large table, but you know, if you have to build tables, that's maybe a shortcut just to get to know. Probably only need one or two tweaks to a table to just get it just get it right. And then of course you can still always make the manual adjustments to the individual rows if you need to. Uh, just head on over to the table. You have to find your cursor right on that sweet spot. And then uh, once you space one, it actually makes them all equally sized. So just by changing one, a lot of people will kind of 
come here and try and move this to where they think March should end, then they'll realize they've made the whole thing too small and then you get a bunch of hashtags. Uh, what you actually want to do is just assume the size of one is going to be what's applied across the board and you're done. Okay, that's pretty much it for the shortcuts. Um, I hope you really enjoy the video. If you want some shortcuts for Tableau Online and Tableau Server, head on to my video for Max. At the very end of that video, I actually went through and I did some shortcuts for Tableau Online and Tableau Server if you're using WebEdit. So check out the end of that video if you want a few more shortcuts you can put to use. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Drop a comment below. Let me know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future. and I'll catch you in the next one.